10 billion dollars that's how much gm have actually wasted on their robo taxi idea with cruise automation but guys here's what's really fascinating elon musk actually called this exact situation a few years back lidar is is a fool's errand and, any, and anyone relying on lidar is doomed and the story behind this is kind of profound when you have a look at the autonomous future i'm des from the electric oracle and in today's video we're diving into probably the most expensive warning that has been ignored in history we're going to explore not just gm's costly lesson with cruise but while they'll likely end up licensing tesla's fsd technology just like many other legacy automakers and trust me, by the end of this video, you'll understand why this $10 billion mistake could actually be a blessing in disguise, but only if they learn lessons from it. This isn't just another story about a failed tech project. This is a masterclass in what happens when traditional automotive thinking collides with the reality of artificial intelligence and autonomous driving. And the implications, they're going to reshape the entire automotive industry. I've been following the autonomous vehicle space for years and watching GM double down on cruise despite clear warning signs has been like watching a slow motion train wreck. But here's the thing, it's not just my opinion. These warning signs have been there for a very long time. Elon Musk has been saying for years that a vision-based approach using neural networks was the only viable path to true autonomy. It's the same way humans drive. We use our eyes and our brain's neural networks. We don't shoot lasers out of our eyes or rely on radar to navigate through traffic. But GM, along with many traditional automakers, chose to ignore these warnings. They instead bet billions on a complex hardware-heavy approach that tried to solve autonomous driving by throwing more sensors at the problem. It's kind of like like trying to teach somebody how to ride a bike by giving them a physics textbook and a supercomputer. Technically sophisticated, but fundamentally missing the point. But what makes this story particularly fascinating is how it perfectly encapsulates the clash between old and new thinking in the automotive industry. And trust me, what I'm about to share with you about GM's approach versus Tesla's vision-based system will completely change how you think about the future of autonomous driving. But before we dive deeper into this technological tale, let me share something that perfectly illustrates why GM's approach was doomed from the start. Imagine for a moment you're trying to teach a child to ride a bike. Would you start by giving them a detailed lecture about gyroscope forces and the center of gravity? Or would you let them learn by watching, trying and gradually developing an intuitive understanding? This exact principle is at the heart of why GM's approach to autonomous driving was fundamentally flawed from day one. So let's rewind the clock back a few years and have a look at what GM was actually ignoring all of this time. While GM was pouring billions into Cruise's complex sensor suite approach, Tesla was developing something fundamentally different. Elon Musk's argument wasn't just simple, it was biologically intuitive. Humans drive using vision and neural networks, so cars should really do the same. This wasn't just a cost-saving measure, it was a fundamental understanding of how true artificial intelligence should work. Just think about how you drive for a moment. You don't send out radar pulses or laser beams to measure the distance to the car in front of you. You use your eyes and your brain's neural network to process visual information in real time. You can handle unexpected situations and adapt to changing conditions and make split second decisions based purely on visual input. This is exactly what Tesla aimed to replicate with their FSD system. The problem is GM went in the opposite direction. They bet big on complex systems that relied heavily on LiDAR, radar and an extensive sensor array. Their approach was trying to give a car superhuman abilities instead of teaching it to see and think like a human. And the problem, this added maximum complexity to the problem of solving autonomy, understanding and adapting to the world like a human driver does. Moreover, GM's approach faced a scaling problem that should have been obvious from the start. Each cruiser vehicle required expensive hardware that needed regular maintenance and calibration. Tesla's vision-based approach, on the other hand, could be updated and improved through software updates, learning from millions of miles of real world data collected from their entire fleet. And the warning signs weren't just technical, they were also economical. While Tesla was building a system that could be deployed across their entire consumer vehicle fleet, GM was creating a solution so expensive it could only work in a robo taxi business model. And even then, 
their economics were questionable at best. Now let's talk about the numbers because they tell a story that's really hard to get your head around. So let's break down what $8.2 billion actually means in the automotive world. With that kind of money, GM could have developed three entirely new vehicle platforms from scratch, retooled multiple factories for EV production, created their own battery technology and production facilities, funded their own extensive network of charging stations, or, and this is gonna sound a bit ironic, they could have actually created their own vision system. Ironic, right? Instead, they poured this money into an approach that many experts, including Elon Musk, have been warning was fundamentally flawed. The real tragedy isn't just the money lost, it's the opportunity cost. While GM was focused on cruise, Tesla was gathering billions of miles of real-world driving data from their consumer vehicles, each mile making their neural network smarter and more capable. But there's an even more painful aspect to this financial story. GM didn't actually lose this money all at once. They had multiple opportunities to course correct, to recognize the warning signs and to pivot to a more sustainable approach. Instead, they doubled down year after year, ignoring not just the warnings from competitors, but the mounting evidence from their own operations. Now here's where the story gets really interesting. The autonomous vehicle market is actually projected to hit $2 trillion by 2030. The number hasn't changed. What has actually changed is our understanding of how we'll get there. The winners in this space won't be the companies with the most sensors or the most complex hardware arrays. They'll be the ones who master the art of neural networks and vision-based autonomous driving. Now this leads us to a fascinating prediction which is a little bit controversial, but hear me out. GM will likely license FSD technology Yep, from Tesla. And look guys, they won't be alone. We're already seeing a lot of automakers showing an interest, but they haven't actually put their foot forward and actually signed on the dotted line. So why are so many showing an interest now? It's because Tesla is actually improving their systems, improving their autonomous driving, and with the latest FSD 13, version 13, they're absolutely killing it. It's fundamentally more scalable and it's more likely to actually hit autonomy in 2025 than any other system around the world. Just think about it this way. Tesla has over a million vehicles on the road, each one constantly gathering data and improving the neural networks. Every mile driven, every unusual situation encountered, every edge case handled, it all feeds back into making the system smarter. No amount of control testing or simulated scenarios can match this kind of real world learning. And look guys, here's the kicker. Tesla's approach gets better exponentially. Each improvement in their neural networks benefits their entire fleet immediately through over-the-air updates. GM's hardware-heavy approach, on the other hand, would require physical updates to each vehicle to achieve significant improvements. The implications of GM's decision to pull the plug on Cruise ripple far beyond just one company. Let's break down how this reshapes the entire automotive industry landscape. So first, let's talk about the traditional automakers. GM's experience with Cruise sends a clear message. The traditional automotive approach to solving autonomous driving just doesn't work. You can't engineer your way to artificial intelligence using traditional automotive development methods. The realization is forcing every major automaker to reevaluate the autonomous driving strategies. Ford has already reduced its investment in Argo AI and Volkswagen scaled back its autonomous driving ambitions. Mercedes is focusing more on advanced driver assistance systems rather than full autonomy. Now look guys, these aren't just coincidences. This is actually proving that their technology just does not work. But here's where it gets really interesting for Tesla. Their vision-based approach, once criticized as inadequate by traditional automakers, is now looking more and more like the only viable path forward. They've created what could become the industry standard for autonomous driving technology. And just like how Microsoft Windows became the standard operating system for PCs, Tesla's FSD could become the standard operating system for autonomous vehicles. The implications for Tesla are enormous. Imagine if they decide to license their FSD technology to other automakers. They could potentially earn revenue from every autonomous vehicle sold, regardless of the manufacturer. This would be similar to how Qualcomm earns money from virtually every smartphone sold through their patent licensing. For consumers, this could actually be good news. Instead of waiting for each manufacturer to develop their own autonomous driving system, which could take decades and billions of dollars, we might see standardized proven technology rolled out across multiple brands 
much, much sooner. This would mean safer, more capable vehicles reaching the market a lot faster. But perhaps the most fascinating point of this video is, is where urban mobility is actually going. The robo taxi dream isn't dead, it's just been reimagined. Instead of purpose-built autonomous vehicles operating by ride-hailing companies, we might see a network of privately owned vehicles that can operate autonomously when their owners aren't even using them. This is closer to Tesla's vision of the future, and ironically, it might be more achievable than Cruz's approach ever was. Based on current trends and what we've learned from GM's experiences, let's explore the three most likely paths forward for GM and what each means for the future of autonomous vehicles. The first, and I believe the most likely scenario, is that GM will license Tesla FSD technology. Now I know what some of you might think, it sounds a little bit far-fetched, right? GM, one of the largest car manufacturers in the world, licensing Tesla's FSD technology? But look, hold on, hear me out. Let's just break down how this actually makes sense. First, the economics are compelling. Even if Tesla charged a significant licensing fee, it would be a fraction of what GM spent on Cruise. The technology is proven, constantly improving, and most importantly, it works. GM wouldn't need to reinvent the wheel. They could focus on what they do best, which is building high quality vehicles that people want to buy. And just think about this from a business perspective. If you're a GM executive looking at your options, what makes more sense? spending another decade and billions more dollars trying to develop your own system from scratch or license a proven technology that's already accumulated billions of miles of real world testing? The answer becomes pretty clear. The second scenario is that GM tries to build their own in-house system. This will be like watching someone touch a hot stove, get burned, wait a while and then touch it again. They'd be starting from scratch, trying to catch up to companies that have already spent years accumulating data and refining their systems. The development cost would be enormous. The timeline would be lengthy and there's no guarantee of success. Plus they'd be competing against systems that are already on the road and improving every day. And the third scenario is GM actually partnering with another tech company. That didn't go too well last time. Maybe Google's Waymo or perhaps a newer player in the autonomous vehicle space. But here's the problem with that approach. It risks repeating the same mistakes they made with Cruise. Different partner, same fundamental issues. Any system that relies on expensive hardware and limited real world testing data will face the same scaling challenges that doomed Cruise. So let's look at how each of these scenarios will play out over the next five years. Under the Tesla licensing scenario, GM could potentially have autonomous features in their vehicles within 18 to 24 months. With in-house development, we're looking at about five or seven years minimum before seeing any significant results. A new partnership, probably three to four years, and that's being optimistic. The market implications of each scenario are intriguing. A GM Tesla partnership would reshape the entire automotive industry overnight. It would likely trigger a domino effect with other manufacturers following suit. We could see a standardization of autonomous driving technology across the industry, similar to how anti-lock brakes and electronic stability control became standard features. Guys, if you found this video valuable, please subscribe to the Electric Oracle. We cover like deep dives in autonomous technology, automotive technology, and everything green tech. I spent hours and hours analyzing the trends, seeing where things are going and looking where most people aren't looking. And I intend to bring you the insights that very few are gonna do for you. So we come to this part of the video where I wanna actually hear what you have to say. What do you think? Do you think GM will end up licensing Tesla's technology? And how long do you think other automakers will actually follow? Please share what your opinions are in the comments below. Look guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.